Welcome to the Afrocentric Woman, where our mission is to inspire Black women to heal core wounds and embrace a luxurious and abundant lifestyle. Thank you for joining me. Let's talk, sis. Hello, and welcome to the Afrocentric Woman. This is the next uh, installment in our series on learning to receive. So I wanted to... Um, I wanted to provide a video on the inner child um, and how inner child might be connected with your ability to receive. And so I'm not really sure where everybody is in terms of um, the concept of inner child. So if please forgive me if you're already super familiar with it, but just in case there are listeners um, who are not familiar with it, I'm going to give a brief um, explanation from my vantage point as to what is the inner child. I did do a quick search before um, before I did this video to try to find like an official definition and I honestly didn't really like any of the definitions that I saw because they don't really they didn't really resonate with me but um, I will post at least one resource on inner child in the description of this video um, so that you can explore it further. And I'm going to explain um, my understanding and how I see the inner child. So what is the inner child? I feel that the inner child is the, is the raw essence. It's your, it's your innocence um, as you are when you are a child. It's who you are as you are um, just naturally. So, you know, when we're born, we're kind of molded into societal norms and we're molded into, um, you know, rules and politeness. And um, we have all kinds of influence on us as far as, um, you know, negative and positive influences from other outside sources. But I feel the inner child is really that very raw, natural express, expression of who you are. Um, it is the vulnerable side. It is the very innocent side. It is your raw emotions, just like the, the, when you, when you dig down into your emotions, deep, 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 deep down. So like they always say like anger is, um, anger is a superficial, uh, emotion because usually if you dig down further, than anger, there's something underneath. And so the whatever is at the very core is the inner child. It's your deepest, deepest emotional needs. Um, that's your inner child. And why does it matter? Your inner child's needs um, have to be fulfilled. And when they are not fulfilled and when they're not fulfilled in the right way, you can look to fulfill them in ways that may be harmful to you. Um, when they're not fulfilled, there may be behaviors that you engage with or relationships that you engage with that are not helpful. And because they're not helpful, there may be a superficial temporary um alleviation but deep down the inner child needs are still not being met so another reason why it matters is because your sense of self-worth is established as a child and how those raw emotions are protected and validated and acknowledged really um, allows for the inner child and those raw emotions to see how you fit into the world and to know that you belong. Um, and you can kind of look, it does help to think about children, very vulnerable, even to think about a baby. So we'll think about from like a baby to maybe seven years old. You know, babies take their cues on the environment from the adults and the people around them. Um, and so that's why when they they cry or, you know, they need attention. Um, it's because they're totally dependent on, um, on other people to, 
to meet their needs and to communicate things about the outside environment. And then that lets the child know that I belong in this family system. I belong in the world. I have a place here and this is what my role is. Also speaking of self-worth, when your needs are constantly met, it sends a signal and then you come to understand that I'm important and I matter because when I need something, I'm able to get my needs met. And that is the message that is sent to a small child when those needs are consistently met. When that child is con you know, consistently, healthily um, acknowledged and validated. It's really important to understand your family system in childhood and understanding if there were, you know, just basically how you were raised and understanding and going deeper um, as black women who are, you know, overwhelmingly, we live in a community that is um, very devaluing of women um, and girls, especially when they're dark skin and glorifies malehood, um, coddles malehood. And so when we live in that culture and then we start to look in then our individual family systems, we can go further than, oh, mammy and pigmisha and terms like that, which are very surface level things. But when we look and we start to really break down, well, then who does anything for the mammy? The mammy is always providing for others, right? So there's no aspect of the mammy archetype that says, okay, mammy, you get to take a break. You get to go on vacation, mammy. Okay, mammy, now it's time for you to take care of yourself. No, mammy is rooted in self-sacrifice, sacrificing for the family, sacrificing for her employers, sacrificing for the greater collective. It's all rooted in sacrifice. So there's no receiving in that archetype in so many uh, black girls grow up around a bunch of mammies who make excuses for um, for males um, who underperform, who are incredibly harsh um, on girls, um, you know, because they don't love them. They don't love themselves, right? So they are they are trained to be difficult, you know, be hard on women and they're trained to make excuses for males. And so when you see that, then it's easy. You can understand why a girl might grow up and adopt some of those beings. And in none of that, um, and in none of that includes receiving anything of value. She's only reared to give. And then with the Pikmisha archetype, you know, it's all about that. It, it's sacrificial as well because you sacrifice your own womanly desires for the validation of a male, of a from an outside source. Um, you you you're always looking outwards for um, what it means to belong into the world, like a boyfriend or a husband or some man giving you attention. Um, or some man giving you some stamp of approval, no matter how fleeting or superficial or um, disingenuous that might be. Um, so there's no receiving with that, you know, nothing of value. And so that helps give you a backdrop of why women reared in those kinds of family systems might have a hard time receiving they maybe never even witnessed their mother receiving a good life, especially not from a man. Um, and so it makes it really difficult. So, so it's really important to begin to connect with those inner needs. And it helps to think about what does a child need? A child needs safety. A child needs security, warmth, connection, comfort. These are some very basic level things and they almost sound pretty trivial, but how many of us, our home wasn't safe? How many of us, our neighborhood wasn't safe? 
How many of us went to school environments or church environments that were not safe? How many of us lack security in our, in our own autonomy, in our own body, our own agency as girls? Lack security. How many of us didn't have proper connection? Our parents were working two, three jobs or just not available or hostile or whatever the case may be. But just not having that consistent connection or comfort. When you were upset, was there anybody there to consistently comfort you especially as a really small child or was that something that you just had to just sit with by yourself or not even know how to process those emotions was there an absentee parent particularly a father where you're looking for that security and consistency from a father figure who wasn't there and it's really important to get connected with those very, very raw emotions because you can begin to go back and um, not necessarily rewrite history, but acknowledge that child body, acknowledge that inner child, acknowledge the little girl that lives in you who never had anybody to listen to her because she was told to be quiet, to go in the corner, to not complain. She doesn't matter. It's not important. It's not a big deal. You know, and that's incredibly damaging to the inner child when these raw, innocent emotions are very real. And especially to a child whose world is pretty small. And so they're very sensitive and innocent beings that are completely deserving of complete protection. Um, I've been aware of the inner child for quite some time and I've used affirmations um, along, the, uh, along the years, like for the past several years, I've used affirmations to um, help my own, you know, mental health and spirit and emotional well-being. And I found them to be useful um, and I was aware of the inner child more or less but I would say that last year during the lockdown I really delved deeper into it and was actually able to get um, even more further advanced with healing some of these past traumas and meeting the needs of the inner child so I will recommend a book called Taming the Outer Child by Susan Anderson if you are interested in a deep dive um, into it and um yeah, I'll, I'll add some information in the description box for that. But I'll just want to at least give you an introduction to the inner child here. So you can think about an experience. Okay, so let me tell you this. Let me back up first. Um, the most powerful way to do inner child work is through journaling. Um, so actually to have the dialogue back and forth um, in a journal, but you could also think it or you could record it um, like audio like I'm doing now or you could record a video or you could just say it out loud or think it in your head. But the most powerful way to do the inner child work is through um, is through the journal. OK, so this is the process that has been helpful for me. So imagine yourself as you are as the adult you and imagine yourself as a child. If you need to look at a picture of yourself when you are about maybe let's say between five to seven years old, then just pull up an old picture of yourself and remember yourself when you were that little. Um, you know, remember what you liked to do. Remember how you used to play. Remember, um, you know, what you wanted to be when you grow up. Just remember yourself as a small child and visualize the little girl you. And then you're going to go back, um, you're going to go back in time. And if there's ever a time that, you know, you really wanted something or you wanted to do something um, or express something and you had a traumatic experience around it, it could be any experience that was very negative. If you had a negative emotional reaction to whatever it was. So let's say you really wanted to go into dance class and um, you ask your mom, hey mom, I want to sign up for dance class. And um, you know, 
you let's say your mom um, ignored you for a while you kept on bringing it up and finally she said you know I'm not gonna put you in dance class you can't dance anyway or something along those lines you can't dance anyway why do you want to be in there with those people you know those so-and-so people who do you think you are you know and then you cry and then she's like why are you crying this is not a reason to cry and then you're alone with with that you know so you want to dance and express yourself you feel like it's a talent that you really wish you had parental support around you've been trying to talk to your mother about this for so long but she won't even listen to you which makes you feel very unimportant um and then um, when you have a sad feeling about it, you're invalidated in your feelings because you're told that it's not a big deal. This is very devastating for a child to go through experiences like this. And when you have multiple experiences like this compiled, you know, a child's mind tends to grasp to some type of reasoning behind everything and if they don't have proper input and guidance they will make up a reason and the reason oftentimes a child makes up with experiences like this is I don't matter I don't matter I'm not worthy in this in essence so once you sit with that experience and those emotions begin to, to come up for that little girl um, you're going to come in as adult you and you're going to listen to her. You're going to invite her to express herself. Now, let me give you a warning. Sometimes it takes a while for the inner child to really feel comfortable fully speaking because they've been, um, it hasn't been safe for so long to communicate anything. So sometimes you're literally, literally will be having a conversation with yourself and the inner child really won't speak up. So it's about that consistency. So if you had an inconsistent parent or a neglectful parent, it's going to be way harder. Well, not definitively, but it can be harder to get the inner child to speak because that child is used to a neglectful um or inconsistent parents so they don't know that you'll be safe so sometimes you have to prove yourself to the inner child that you're not going to abandon them you're not going to leave you're going to be consistent you're going to stick around so it's really important that you keep your word and keep your consistency with your inner child um, and not, maybe you can just start with apologizing you know hi um, little let's say your name is um, Tamika Little Tamika, I am so sorry that I've been neglecting you for so long. I am here. I'm ready to listen and I'm ready to um, to be there for you um, the way you've always deserved for someone to be there for you. I can't go back into the past and be there for you when you needed adult um Soup when you needed adult support, but I, I'm gonna from here on out, I will be here for you. Um, and then little Tamika may say, "Well, I don't really believe you. Why should I believe you?" Um, I understand. Um, and she's talking to Big Tamika. So little Tamika says, "Well, you're right. You have every reason not to believe me because I haven't." taken good care of you I haven't listened to you I have not protected you please forgive me I've been ignorant and disconnected from you but I must tell you that um, a healing for the both of us um, we need each other and I need you I'm here for you because you matter and you're important to me and I want to listen um, I just want to let you know that when your mom didn't listen to you about 
the dance class. I know that really hurt your feelings and I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. You're a wonderful dancer. Um, I'm sorry. I just want to give you a hug. Is that okay? Little Tamika may say, I guess I don't know. Um, maybe I, I think I do want a hug. Okay, I want to give you a hug. And um, how do you feel now about dance? Sometimes I want to dance, but I don't ever get to dance. You know what, little Tamika, you're right. Um, we're going to go dancing this weekend um, because you're a great dancer and I know that you like to express yourself through dance. Or maybe we can just throw on some music tonight and just have fun and dance. Or we could take a class. It's never too late to get out there and to start dancing. Um, how do you feel about, um, how did you feel when um, your mother didn't listen to you? And then little Tamika may answer. And then big Tamika answers to little Tamika. I'm so sorry that your mom didn't listen to you when you wanted to express something, but when you want to express it today, I will listen. I will listen to what you have to say. And so on and so forth. This just kind of gives you um, an idea of a dialogue between big you and little you. Um, the book that I, um, the book that I, uh, recommend goes way more into depth if you want but if you just want to start the dialogue with your journal um, so you just write you know big me or you know if your name's Tamika big Tamika and then big to be Tamika starts the conversation and then little Tamika answers what well, is those raw emotions um, and then sometimes you know I have found it helps when I'm feeling overwhelmed or when I'm feeling um, hurt about something or well, less so now but especially when I first started doing this work for me to just stop what I'm doing and just take an opportunity to listen to my own emotions to listen to my own emotions and see what is going on what is happening um, and that has really opened up so much. Um, this inner child work and healing is very, very crucial to your sense of worthiness. And a feeling worthy is something that I struggled with for a really long time. Uh... A lot less today in this moment as I record this, but up until very recently, it was just something that I couldn't really, I would, I would do all the affirmations. I would, you know, I would do all the meditations. I would do all of that. And it wasn't clicking. It wasn't clicking. And I found that this inner child work and going back and doing all the work, going back and reprocessing a lot of um, traumatic situations and being there for myself. And it helped me feel so much more self-reliant, which means that you're, you're less, you have more detachment in your relationships. So you interface in relationships from a place of wholeness instead of a place of more brokenness or incompleteness or feelings of unworthiness. But you enter into relationships for the joy of it and the interaction in the moment of what it is. But you don't feel so overly invested in receiving something from the outside to come in, whereas you already feel internally fulfilled. And that is what I noticed 
after having gone through the inner child work, continuing with the inner child work and continuing to stay connected to those raw emotions. So not in the sense of just naming the emotion and you know that you're feeling it or maybe you don't want to feel it. You try to get rid of it. You try to suppress it, but it's not even about suppressing it. It's about going deep into that emotion to see what it is. What is it telling you? What is that emotion trying to communicate to you? Where is that emotion pointing you? Because when we listen to ourselves and we begin to meet those emotional needs, when we meet our own emotional needs, the sense of wholeness and worthiness just goes through the roof. It's a really amazing feeling. And when you feel worthy, when you feel whole, when you feel complete, when you feel self-validated, it makes receiving so much easier because you know what you deserve from the world. You know that you were put on this world, it, you were put in, on this earth to enjoy everything that life has to give. And as a feminine woman, you open yourself up to receiving resources, investments, and efforts from the men around you. Really, anybody can be, a, be of service to you, to help you and to enrich your life. And you feel comfortable and at peace with receiving it because when you connect with yourself and your inner femininity, your inner self, that little girl, that little princess inside of you, um, you are really a magnet to helpful people and to resources. It becomes so much more easier to receive um, investments, as I said. So um, thank you for listening. I'm sure that we are going to continue this conversation and talk further about inner child. Um, these are my initial thoughts that I want to share with you. And um, yeah, enjoy. I look forward to reading your comments um, in the comment section. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Peace. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with the Afrocentric Woman. Special gratitude to our subscribers. If you'd like to stay connected with this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you like this content, please hit the like button. If you have any comments or thoughts about the content shared, please drop down into the comment section and let us know. Remember, you are worthy, you are enough, you are unique, and you are lovable. And I appreciate you.